Okay, I'm, I'm going to start talking now. It's, it's the full screen, but is, is my... Is the image sadly. Okay, also, um, it is the image being interfered with? I won't be able to use the illustrator instead. Oh. Could I ask everyone to mute, please? Sorry, sorry, Kevin. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay, I, I, I don't like the way this, um, we have to put up with that. Part of the image is hidden. Oh. Is that the case? Can you see? Well, the the, the right-hand side? Hmm? I think we can see the whole image. Oh, good. Okay. I think yep. no what I can see then. But the, the, um, are we okay to go now? I'm sorry yes. to be <laughs> I've delayed everything. This is a very early painting, not, not so early. I mean, it's the third year of my Royal College, that um, my postgraduate in the Royal College in London. But it's, even though it, it, it's the third year of a three year, um, sorry, the last year of a three year um, course. Uh, and I was, I was about, um, by then I was about 25. Uh, the, the, and I had been doing some quite um, more complex uh, video and um, object-based uh, things. Uh, and I, I discovered all of a sudden how, how exciting it was to simply do something very, uh, uh, to observe and to render something that's in front of you without any, without any terribly sophisticated, Attempts to tromploy to have shading and just to, just to, and I'm on I'm in, I'm in the recess now the uh, summer recess and there's some uh, d um, dregs of decorators paint lying around the masonet that we had in North London and um, I, I did this painting of a wall tin opener I don't think you see wall tin openers anymore but um and, and the, the uh, three in one oil was on the shelf I, I i didn't want to edit i just wanted to simply record render what was in front of me as simply as possible i i've kept this painting and it's quite dear to me still um even though it's been many years I'm, i don't want to linger too much on it but it it, it was because the, the throughout this talk now you'll see that there are a few places where there's been quite drastic changes. Well, you, you haven't seen what came before, so you can't really appreciate it. But this was a drastic change. And so I continued this idea of simply painting what was in front of me. This is my, once I, once the term has kicked off again, um, the third year has kicked off, I, I'm going into the studio in the college and, they, uh, and, I'm, and I, I, I simply painted these objects on my, on, what was called donkey. Um, and this is my, uh, my BSA Bantam bike that I used to ride in from Barnet, the outer regions of London to into Kensington every day. Uh, and um, I wouldn't think of too much on this because it was extraordinary. Our health and safety didn't seem to matter in those days. The, 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 the warden in the front of the college, or it, it had to be in front of me. Whatever I was painting had to be in front of me and, and allowed me to push this bike up into the studio. Um, and I was quite close to it. I had to be quite close to it because the canvas was quite big. But this meant that I worked across the surface. I wasn't able to go back and forth. So I. I I, I, I like that idea of painting all over. I remember this, this was a very exciting painting for me. And I remember it went in and out of different stages and I was getting tired and then I resolved it all by simply using bigger brushes. This is towards the end of this phase now. This is my, one of my last paintings in the Royal College. I don't know if anybody is old enough to remember what I am. A, a series called Civilization where um, Lord Clark, Ken, Ken Clark, um, uh, took us through the history of our um, He was very, uh, 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 he, 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 he ran the National Gallery at the time of the Second World War. Um, and he was quite a, um, 
an influential figure. Can people hear me, by the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can hear me, sir. Um, and so I, I put him in my studio anyway, and I've got the Daily Mirror underneath one of the easels there because I was trying to be um, clever, I suppose, because he, he, he did make, um, for a short time, high art, very popular. Um, uh, Again, I, it, it's becoming a little bit more sophisticated there now. I'm not simply doing what's in front of me. I'm turning my head, but continuing to paint what's in front of me. So you've got two perspectives going on. This is, um, oh, sorry, I, I, I've left the college now. And um, I'm painting in a slightly different way. Well, it's a big different way, but um, uh, these are quite large. You've got the size on the screen there. They, they're quite large. This is called A Lady My Desire. Um, now, I seem to have um, paired this retrospective down so much that I, I, I put this photograph here because I'm my beautiful wife, Sue. Um, and, um, I put it there because it's, it's at a time when I, I'm just, I'm going through another change and I've decided to um, reinvestigate. Um, oh, that, I'm not, I put Lucy in here now. This is completely chron chronologically uh, inaccurate because um, Lucy is here because she wasn't in the other photographs. She was, uh, she was percolating. <laughs> she wasn't, uh, She's been conceived, I think. I'm not quite sure. But she wasn't in that photograph. Uh, uh, and she'll give me hell, if, and I, I'm not included. This is a photograph, but it is quite interesting because it's a, a mad dash I did to get over to Germany. She lives in, in Finchley in North London. So I had to get to Harwich to get, take a crossing and collect a lot of paintings before uh, I, I thought, and it was, turned out to be the case, that. Uh, a hard Brexit was going to come in. And I, I had paintings that I needed to get out of Germany. So, um, I, and that's why I put that one in here. Um, that's quite an interesting picture. That when, when Lucy comes down to London to visit me, she nearly always has something in the back of her car. And sometimes I don't even know until this, she's gone uh, and she's purloined. Um, anyway, this is an, uh, uh, so there's a, a painting from the Royal College period which we've left now in, in my timetable. But um, I'm not, I don't want to be looking at Lucy so much. Okay, so I've started to, um, to paint in oil now. And uh, it's, so it's, it's quite a drastic, it uh, doesn't look drastic, but it's, it is quite a drastic um, uh, period because I was still working in, with um, uh, uh, not oh the, the the big change here by the way is that I was no longer painting what I saw in front of me, uh, that 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 was a good few years previous now mind but it had that was the biggest change here, I I was I was um, uh, I was allowing the uh, my um, uh, how used I'd got to painting, uh, how used to um, using the brush using the paint using the materials. To, to simply improvise. Uh, and so I did a lot of, of very small um, improvisations on, on gessoed panel. And um, uh, uh, can we see this one? It's called Y, yeah. Um, now, uh, I, I don't know where this came from. Obviously, it came from me. I mean, it's, it's one of my paintings, but it is so. Um, it is such a drastic departure, a, a, a reverse reversal. I, I was going through, um, and I, I still have the. Uh, I'm still most moved and most um, excited by uh, abstract art, uh, but I was going through a little bit of a, a crisis as far as modernism was concerned. I'd read Emil Zola's the the. the um, his masterpiece, which is based on 
anyway, there's no reason to have a, a, a work of fiction should never have influenced my, my thinking about art. But um, um, there was a number of, of things that ha had happened. Uh, I, and I, I, uh, a close friend of mine who was a um, Jenny Stein was having a breakdown. Was concerned, and how I was able to improvise. I didn't see this in any, anywhere, but it was. I suppose it was um, a layers and layers of, of, of old master art is um, building up in my subconscious. But how I was able to just conceive that, like uh, onto a canvas, um, is I, I don't know. It's one of uh, where does that come from when you see something anew without any um, well, you think, I think there must have been a, a, a percolation, a, a, a layering of ideas in your head for a long time. Um, and then all of a sudden it, it, it comes, it percolates up from, from subconsciousness and you, but you still, I still have to conceive it. I still have to uh, work out the light and the shade too long ago. Now something's happened. Something's happened, I can't change the slide. Um, why did that happen? Sorry, right, okay. Yeah, internet is unstable. Um, okay. Are we still, uh, are you still with me? Yes, we are. Okay, good, good. <laughs> um, the, uh, the, the, the to go back to the one previous uh, slide, not steps, but the one before that. That was why. The, this was another one of the, of the my, my early ventures. I, I did paint in oils, by the way, when I was um, before I even went to art school. In the uh, when I was about sixteen, seventeen. But I, 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 but all the time I, I was in art school, I was using other kinds of medium, egg tempera, acrylics. Uh, so this was another attempt. This was another venture back to my oil painting. Um, oh, the, the, this again is an improvisation, but it, it's it's a sort of image that uh, you can conjure up without too much um, creativity, because it's. I don't know why, it's symbolic of, it, it was just called work. So this is another one, cause, and I, I, I return to this now. Sometimes I return to themes that are very long, quite a distant past. And I return to them to, um, to um, I don't know, but I, I, th I, think, I think you have the right, you have the, the sort of license to, um, to it's your it's yours anyway, you know. And uh, I I don't feel I, I don't know why I'm uh, I'm feel I have to explain why I, I, I because there is a kind of a, a repetitiousness about it when we do it. But um, I often find that artists that, that have to come up with images constantly uh, have a very tough deal really because a lot of other arts are, are reproduced uh, automatically as part of their art form is that they can be reproduced and be but but poor artists have got to keep coming up with brand new um, uh, fresh ideas uh, and I, I've of late I've started to do it more actually because there's so much uh, I've been on the planet so long now that I've got to, I feel that uh, one can sort of quarry uh, through your, your work um, <coughs> Work. This is an uh, I I have left quite a lot of things out, but this this is um I, I discovered it, it relates to what I was just saying in many ways that uh, having to come up with narratives and images constantly, um and I, I, I like doing it, but it it, it does wear wear you down a bit because the, um, I, I, unless you're lucky enough to constantly have this sort of uh, um, ability to improvise things out of nowhere, out of a void. But uh, I, I did this, um, I didn't, I hadn't seen our Turkish bath painting at this stage, but I did um, 
improvising away, and I did come up with um, a, a complex um, composition of um, lots of figures, nude figures, um, and um, I, I, I thought in a way it, it made the work more formal than than still very figurative, but it was it was a kind of formal arrangement. It was a composition more than it was a symbol or a narrative uh, uh, as the steps had been and work had been and why had been the, the previous oil paintings you saw. So I, I threw myself into these Turkish bath paintings. And in some ways, I, I am seeming to be racing through my life here now. In some ways, they, um, You see how the, 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 figures, the, the, the figures become um, like uh, instruments in order to c construct a composition or, and that's what they're doing more than anything else. This is, this is, this is behind me at the moment, actually, this painting, it's enormous. And, um, and it kind of brought the series, because it was a big series, it was about um, 15 paintings and all. Um, oh, this is this is a this is a level, but it kind of brought the series to a close in a way, um, and uh, it is also a um, a new um, wasn't uh, but it wasn't it, it was a successful artistic. Artistically, I thought it was successful, and Sue always thought they were my best paintings. But um, whether a whether an exhibition is a success or not, people take have different <laughs> interpretations of it. Some people think it's if it's critically well received, it's a success. I, I have lived off my paintings more or less. I it's been erratic, but I have kind of managed to live off my paintings for. Oh gosh, if she was here now, <laughs> she'd be reminding me about all the years we, we didn't have any money. But, um, um, and so uh, a successful exhibition for, for, a successful exhibition means an exhibition that has sold well. Uh, and this exhibition, it was a difficult time. Uh, I don't know if anybody can remember the early nineties, but um, Lawson was a chancellor and they, they, you can't imagine why it was, um, economics was so different then. But um, it seemed to me that this, the solution to any problem at the time was to hike interest rates drastically. And so um, it was a very difficult time and, and paintings uh, and art, and there it, 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 it was a deep recession where people were losing houses because of negative equity all kinds of things. And there is me with this um, uh, romantic idea uh, about art and massive paintings and um, a family living in London, having to um, square um, a circle. Um, so uh, it, it kind of, it, they, they kind of spell the end of my, um, time in, I had to think after this show, um, how to continue living because we had, we, we had started to live quite well, um, big, biggish house. Uh, so I, I ran away, no, um, from, from London that is. Um, uh, I came down to Wales, came back to Wales to convert uh, a garage um, church into a studio and a dwelling. And um, and this was um, one of my first paintings. I was living in Llangonoid then, um, near Llangonoid, a place called Sleti Brongi, um, which was near my state, uh, and uh, not far from when I was where I was originally brought up in San, um, Um and. Uh, Things started to change. I was walking a lot in the hills and doing stuff. Uh, 
and um, and this has come up too soon. Well, not really, no. Uh, we're, I, I painted Running Away with the Hairdresser while I was in Flangonoid. We were living in a, a bungalow where um, waiting for things to happen uh, over in the, the, the other valley where, where, where the church that I'd come back. I'd come back to Wales for, for a specific reason. I wanted to, to continue living as, as an artist and I was going to convert a church, which is, um, became Pierre Santasvaya, with St. Mary's house, um, because the church was for St. Mary's of Pontarill, a village in the Garo Valley. But this, this was painted though in my state, well, in um, Flangonai, and that's the Cairo Hotel. Ah, now it's a theme of running away. So um, it's got lots of symbology and um, narrative sort of strength and dynamic in it. But uh, I, I, and I, I normally, I, I improvise quite a lot, but I needed streets for this. I needed, so I drove around for quite a while, drove a little bit north of my stake and I came to, to Cairo where the station hotel, there, there is, it's, it's at the bottom of a fork in the hills either side of it. I just, um, it's, it's like, in a way, the part of that building is like the, oh well. It's sort of, the, the, I always thought of the composition is like a spatchcocked chicken. Um, it's sort of flat, it's, um, there's two leaves to it and they've been flattened out. And... This, is, uh, this is the same neck of the woods. While I was there, I drove up the hill from, um, up that hill and looked back. Now, this is just to draw, um, draw just, just to do some drawing of the, the topography. And, and later then I, I, I conceived this um, painting. Uh, so I became, uh, the, 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 what was happening in Wales now, I'm looking back, I can see it. The, the paintings were becoming far more narrative, far more about stuff, whereas they were far more about art in London. The Turkish bath paintings particularly were definitely about, mainly about art. <clears throat> yeah. Um, now, I've left my stake now and I've come over to the Garo Valley. This is um, uh, people in, anybody listening to this in the Garo will recognize this. This is a, 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 a comp, complex of steps that take you from Station Road in Pontreal up to up to Thlest or up to the the main the, the top road. Um, and while I, I, I so it is quite near from where my the church that I converted was. This is not long after moving to the Garo Valley that I painted this. Uh, I, I wondered if the owner is watching. So they, we live in London anyway. They, um, it's, it's one of those paintings that seminal, I think the word is, I don't know what that means in terms of art. No, this is the, the, the same neck of the woods. And I, I, I like this very much. It's very, very simple. Um, and the figure's the last thing to go in there. Um, but that's Station Road, it's just across the road from just to, um, across the way from my church. That's using the, um, the complex of buildings again. This is called Public Private Lives. And I didn't see this. I, I was, uh, when I was in my stay, a commission came up for, in Gilvach Goch. Um, so I, I drove around Gilvach Goch. I, I, I didn't get the commission, by the way. Uh, I drove around Gil I, I was desperate to do anything at the time. I drove around Gilvaco and, and there I saw where the where the um, the people the terraced houses didn't have um much of a back garden, I suppose. So they would they would have their steamers and their lilos on, on the pavement outside the front door. And that stayed in my head. I, I like the idea of of um public uh private uh 
activities in public or I suppose the same that you have in any beach or, or um, seaside. But I, I like the idea of sort of washing lines. And so I, I, I didn't see this way in, in the Garo, in, um, but I, uh, I liked it. And I think it works. I, oh, we're going back to the complex the part of that composition of um, social order, the, the one I showed. Did I give you the title of that? The first, the first painting I showed you about the Garo, once I'd moved over from my stake to the Garo Valley. Yeah, this is a nice picture. Okay. This is in Germany now. It's in a collector in Berlin. They're kind of buddies, friends or what have you. And it's just a bit of horseplay walking home in the rain from the rugby. I don't know what it is. I just don't know what it is. It's one of those things you, you do something uh, and something is telling you that you push it further or make it a bigger painting or Yeah, this is very often, uh, um, you can't explain what's happening. Somebody said to me a good thing recently. But, uh, when people ask me about, to tell me about it, I, I, it's what's happening or explain this to me, why or is it? And I, I, I said to, well, ask the painting. And, um, you know, it, they, they, uh, it's, it's there. Or, uh, it's it's for your your own um, get out of it what you can by looking by simply looking. That's an improvisation. A celebration. I thought I'd taken that out actually of the slideshow. This is a, this is a, quite a small study, but yeah. Oh, I, I don't know if you can see. Can people see this? My inter, uh, no, right. Is, is everybody with me? Can they hear me? Yes, no. I think we can oh. all hear Kevin. Oh, good, good, good. That's great. Um, we're just all on mute. That's all. <laughs> oh, that's good. No, I, I, um, my, my Wi-Fi has been playing up, and then, so anyway, this is um, we we bred pointers for a while. Me and Sue. So I did. They they helped me a great deal. I often used to feel with with a, a dog, for instance, it needs a lot of walking and exercise. And it's almost like a contract. You keep them fit and they keep you fit in return because they, you have to get up and walk them. But the other thing they did for me, they used to play fight. And I, I devised this way of painting, a far um, quicker, looser way of painting. And looking at these paintings now, I, I've got to, yeah. So I, um, so this is Sue when, and the dogs and it was, yeah. I don't know what, this is something, this is, a, this is also in Germany and it's, it's small. It's, a, it's just called glue. Now, they, it couldn't be translated in, into German um, because glue in this case is both a, a noun and an adjective, sorry, a noun and a verb. Um, and, and it was the verb that I was uh, playing with here um, in, in the title. Um, but anyway, I can't remember what they did for me uh, because it was in a little exhibition. Anyway, it was, um, I think they got the idea without being too. Now this is tiny little, for a while, I was um, summer evenings, I can't remember when it was. Uh, I was going out, but you know, when, when it's very light, very smooth, sunny and uh, well past eight o'clock. And, uh, and I was, uh, I, I, I think this was one of those successful attempts at um, painting. Um, it's quite a muddle when you've got your oils and 
paraphernalia and a little easel or something. I can't remember what I have. Yeah. Yeah, I think I took a little easel with me or something. I can't remember. But um, it's um, this little thing is actually in so in a, an auction in um, what the name of the, the Welsh sale. Uh, what are they called? Uh, um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the auction house now. But it's it's um, this it was seventeenth of of April, uh, and. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with it myself, I've got to admit, and I might well get it back. Um, oh, this is me and Sue outside what became Studio 18. Um, Sue's dementia had progressed quite a bit by then, and I'm, I'm nursing her and looking after her at the same time as um, taking on this project, um, which now seems bizarre. And the opening exhibition of it was the history paintings. Um, the history paintings are quite, um, they, they, they took up a large part of my life. It doesn't seem, uh, most of them are in London now. In, in, um, there's one bought someone in Cardiff, but the most of them are in London. They're um, in storage, really, with uh, my London dealer. Uh, but they, they started off with very large charcoal, uh, like a, a freeze of brown packing paper, big roll of brown packing paper uh, in charcoal. Um, and this is just a section of that frieze of, um, of the charcoal drawing. That's, that's, um, that's one of the first of the big paintings. The, the Anderson family uh, settled, they were a music hall family, originated in London, but they, they, they had a short spell in, in New York and they came and they sailed back. It's, it's a bit of a mystery, really. Um, they sailed back, and uh, I think they must have read a trade paper on, on the boat coming back. They were um, certain um, establishments in Wales that had been roller skating uh, rinks had become um, empire uh, um, entertainment centers. And they were looking for management uh, because this family uh, before the First World War drive into, into the, the Garo Valley and um, set uh, a maid, uh, an, an Argyle car, which is one of the first non horse driven um, cars. And um, uh, it's, it's extraordinarily incongruous, it seems, but uh, life was so different in the um, Welsh valleys then, particularly coal mining valleys, because they were in the, um, the hardship was undeniable, but they were busy, busy, busy industries and there's very little tr transport in and out. So they, 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 the, the, um, the things to do was quite rich in the valleys, in the valley itself. So there were theatres and uh, emporiums and different um, things to do, uh, and these these were um, th these were sophisticated people, the Andersons, and they they um, they managed this thing called the 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 rink or that's, or the hippodrome, and um, and they they got people interesting people in, uh, and uh, and they were helped the community quite a lot. Um, it's only recently, only recently really, been truly recognised and their unmarked grave has been um, uh, rectified. The, the uh, lack of um, appreciation of what they did has been recognised. Uh, by, by, yeah, Hugh Ranka Davis actually, who was the MP at the time, he's an assembly member now for the area. 
um, helped uh, a great deal in recognizing who these Andersons were. Because it was by by the twenties, it was it was kind of over. In nineteen twenty two, the 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 original building, the the rink, had burnt down, and they scattered the Andersons. But um, I I thought it was fascinating because it was a glimpse into a more sophisticated, even though uh, you you know it was life was harder, but there was a sophistication there as well. I have an American daughter-in-law, when she saw these paintings, she said, Kevin, was, was Ponte Kama ever that busy? It was, they, it was so busy. It was a center for so much activities. And again, you had this, you had this um, fact that there wasn't a lot of traveling in and out uh, of the um, valley. So this, this is a, a, another one of the history paintings. I had to exaggerate it slightly. There's, there's a box. It's still there, it's a boxing field and kids can, um, will remember playing there. Uh, they, but um, whether it, uh, some people are, 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 are adamant that it was used as a, 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 um, a, a boxing area. Um, others others <laughs> uh, dispute it and, uh, but I, I, so I, I use a bit of, um, well, rather a lot of artistic license. Can you see it all right? Yeah. Um, right, this is the Andersons again. The other, the, the other thing they did, they got people in um, performers uh, from their world, their sort of music hall world, uh, to visit Ponte Cama because they, you, they, it was, viable, you know, they, they, you would have people, you had, for instance, you had, that is um, Ron Zavar. I, I, I've, I've exaggerated, I've, I've done something like a, a picnic area, uh, which probably, I don't know would have been there, but I, I've made it into some kind of um, Arcadian painting, really, with an industry, with a with a, a harshness of industrial life in the middle distance. I was talking about something else then and I got distracted. Yeah, um, this, is, uh, this is a kind of depiction. I, I, I do tend to be a bit mischievous with these things, but they, they, this is, um, I based this on the 1926 miners lockout. Now, very often in, in Wales, and, and I don't think it's the same in, with other strikes, they, when you have big industrial strikes or, or demonstrations, there will be a carnival aspect would come in. So it, it wouldn't be unusual to have floats with um, uh, um, with a, a Mexican theme or something. I don't know what I'm playing at there. Uh, I think I might have seen some photographs of um, uh, vigilante groups, for instance, who would, who would sort of try and protect uh, uh, evictions from bailiffs and what have you. And, uh, uh, and so there's, um, there's a kind of element of make-believe. Now, the, the, the um, Lenin is there because there was connections, that, not in the Garo, but there were connections in Mardi, in, in Rhonda and what have you, where the, the youth would, would, would be connected to the um, uh, uh, Russian Revolution or the aftermath. And, they, and, they would, and the hardships would be alleviated by food packages and things. Now, there was also a great um, a march, a demonstration from the, one of the uh, TUC annual conferences in Bristol. And there was yeah, an employee <coughs> of one of the districts in Wales, I must admit, and they had uh, a, a banner, which, which was, um, which I, 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 I decided to erect, because I like the red anyway, I decided to erect in, in uh, Falda Square, Falda Square in Ponte Cama, uh, which is where the Falda colliery would have been. It's not there now. Now, Liebestadt. Now, sometime in um, 2018, I decided to do a very big painting 
it does seem bizarre now, but it was, um, uh, I, it's because of Studio 18, it's got, it's, it's, there's a very big space there and it's, um, the inspiration came from the space that I created in Studio 18 as much as anything else. So you had, had um, 17, but I wasn't thinking of Sue when I did this, but um, it's inevitable that uh, that's a strange, I don't think you should paint about life, but because uh, life will make its way into your paintings anyway. Um, but I try to keep life and art separate. I know I bang on about it sometime, but, sometimes, but um, so this is uh, a very big painting, a seven, no, five meters by, four meters by five. Um, I had the, the stretchers, the stretcher made in London and shipped down. And Lucy, Lucy stitched the um, two widths of 72 inch Belgian linen together to make, to make up the, um, yeah, the four meters. The height, yeah. Um, and um, it shows, I, I, I didn't know what I was, I, I knew I wanted to do this big painting, but as I said, it was, it was, um, it was the space that I had and the gallery that was the inspiration to do this thing. Um, and I, and then th that's my, the nature of how I work very often. So I've got this enormous canvas and there were videos, I don't know if everybody, anybody saw any of them, of me uh, priming and resizing and gesturing the canvas and constructing the, um, the tower to get up and down to paint on it. But I, it was quite late before I actually knew what was going to go on it. Uh, I, I was going to have two tall pillar-like figures um, either side of the, the length of the canvas upright. Um, but then I, I, once I am up on this pillar and I've got very, um, and, and I'm washing in the paint very, uh, I, and I had done a diagonal composition very often in the past. So I'm, I, I quickly put in this diagonal um, figures, they like someone flying and someone else holding on. And then, um, I get back down off the pillar and I say, so the thing is with scale, because it's very important to painting scale, very important to a painter aspect of all, unlike, unlike video or lots of um, uh, contemporary art forms, uh, painting, scale in painting is, is king really. It can either be as big as a Sistine Chapel ceiling or as small as a, an Edwardian, um, no, mm -hmm. I mean, Tudor miniature, um, a stamp, <laughs> sounds crazy, but scale is everything. And the other thing, when you do something as big as this, it kind of nudges everything out, else out of the way. So you, you're, you've got the fact, the material fact of the surface of the painting, and you've got to deal with that. And um, uh, and it also takes you places that you didn't intend to go. Because this painting, is, it's, a, it's like a monster there in the studio. All right, I've done this diagonal thing, which was partly conceived, preconceived. And then I come down and I, I, I would have thought while I was looking up at them and doing them, that they were going to be in the sky. Well, they are in the sky, but it wasn't until later that I thought I would be above them even higher and I would be looking down on whatever it was that she was leaving. So it becomes this, so the, so the, the life that is, that is taking place beneath is everything, you see. You can, you can like the, um, I wonder how much more I've got. <laughs> That's my, 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 my granddaughter. And give you some idea of how big it is. The the um, here I get off this now. Um, 
So we'll get back to them. Okay, so um, we haven't quite reached lockdown, first lockdown, but this is a painting that is um, very successful painting. I think it's called Pegging Out. Now, so a friend of mine, because it is, it's what you say in the valley when, when you put your washing out on the line, you peg out, pegging out. Because it also means, it could also mean, it's a pun, or it could also mean pegging out to, to die, to leave, to, to, to peg out. And she's putting a European flag, um, you could call it a tea towel or a flag. So kind of where we are pegging out. But it, it doesn't, so it kind, it's kind of symbol, symbolic, but it's, it's more, everybody loves here. I know it's a green welly, the flag. Yeah, I like the painting. So that's kind of, it, we're, we're kind of leaning into uh, lockdown now, the first lockdown. Now, they, they we're in the lockdown now, and this is a, draw, a page, page from my drawing book about lockdown bingo, about people improvising, you know, they, they, they kind of keeping distance, but they, they, they're playing bingo, not in a hall, but uh, out of their front doors or in the street. So that's um, painting. You see, you see the, the mother in the front there is breastfeeding a child while she's doing a bingo card. Quite like that. That's another lockdown painting. Quite a lot of these paintings are still in Studio 18. Um, uh, I hope you're not losing my internet. Uh, this is um, a very rough sketch. They, they can be quite rough. This is for, this is the paint. This is a big painting. And it's Newtown. It's the easing of Newtown takeaway in Oxford Street, Monte Or oh, you can see, I, I've used, that's me hanging out of the window of upstairs office in, in Studio 80. Um, Oxford Street, Ponte Cama. I, I think this might be cropped a little bit, but only a little on the left-hand side. Most of it is, most of the slide is there. I think we've come to the end, end now. Um, if anybody wants to ask me some questions, we could nip back through some paintings. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear, we can hear you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Right. Hi. Thank you so much, Kevin. That was absolutely brilliant. Really informative. Um, and I loved some of the, the, the quotes you said um, during it. I mean, like, ask the painting. Yes. Get out of it what you can by simply looking, which is fabulous. Yeah. That's, I mean, there's so much to see in your paintings. Um, and everyone tells us, every single one of them tells a story. Um, yes. And you can see see so much, uh, and especially the, the the very large painting you, you you showed that is one of your largest. Was it five meters by four meters? Four meters by five um, mm -hmm. of the floating figures above. Yes, that's, that's, that, in, that's just you that's know incredible. As, as they say, yes, the size yes. of it, the scale, and scale is everything. And I know you were very very large um, as well, but it's also lovely to see your small sketches and and paintings. Um, so thank you so much. Now, is there any questions, please, from the floor? If you unmute yourselves. I've got a quick question. Yep. A couple of questions, actually. Um, I was just wondering, with these enormous paintings, do you, I mean, they've got such a sense of um, spontaneity about them. Do you just go straight in and paint them, or do you make studies first? No, I go straight into painting. Yeah, I, I do go straight into them. There, there might have been there might have been some small improvisations, but they 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 wouldn't be sort of blown up or coordinated. Hmm. They would just be like rehearsals for wow. the. Um, but the, the easing of Oxford, the easing of Newtown, I just went straight into that. It's such a big painting. This is the one that um, I finished off with there. It's such a big painting that um, 
You don't have to worry about mistakes, really. You know, you can just, and, and it's the way I paint is, uh, I don't know, you said the, the brush strokes, the brush stroke is broken. Is you can just go back into a, an area and and reconstruct it or repaint. Um, no, I, I, it's a certain. Um, I, it's a certain amount of cheating going on, I suppose, because I don't have to be. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have to be um, uh, too um, paranoid or concerned about not getting things right. In fact, very often, the bigger the mess or the more mistakes you make, the more interesting the resolution is. And that is sometimes how you come up with a new composition altogether, is trying to resolve or get out of the mess that you've... Um, is that too romantic? Is that all too romantic? Trying to get out of the mess that you've um, created. Uh, that's, yeah, thank you. I just think your angles are so interesting and they look, I mean, I'm not a painter, but they look like they're difficult to achieve. So it's yeah. interesting that um, that you yeah. say that you don't work it out before, that's all, because... I, 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 think, I, I think I've been aware of having, quite early on, of having an understanding of perspective, mm. not just um, railway lines, et cetera, but the perspective within, within the body, within the figures and within whatever. Uh, and so I can, I can, because of that, I think that's how I'm able to to imagine without seeing things, because I I know how foreshortening takes place. I know these are obvious things, but um, yeah, it's interesting that though. Mm. I remember well, I remember one of my earliest memories I have was I was doing uh, a, a painting on in school uh, on sugar paper with powder color or something, and they uh, and I remember. Uh, it was just a, a boat with a triangle sail, so it's so simple. And I, I wanted to, to, to do a cloud. And I can remember looking out of the school window to look at the cloud. And I was very young now. And I knew, and this is why I, I have remembered it. I knew it had been a significant thing for me to do because it's, it's, it sounds a bit too grand, but it's exactly what the, 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 um, the, the Greeks did to the Egyptian foot. They, they looked at the foot and then they created the perspective and the foreshortening of it. So it wasn't, um, uh, do you know what I mean when I say Egyptian foot? The G Egyptian foot, no matter what the figure is doing is in profile because they couldn't work out the, um, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I know other people probably want to ask some questions too. My other question is, early on in the talk, you said that you were really interested in abstract painters, and yet your yeah. painting is really figurative. And so my other question is, wh whose work do you look at, or whose work do you is are you inspired by? Well, it's a, it's a lot of work from the past now, yeah. I must admit. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, it doesn't have to be contemporary at all. Uh, so, so, um, but no, when I was growing up or when I was in art school or, or, or first in London, and uh, it was the sort of the American abstract expressionists such as Rothko and Pollock, they, they were the heroes. They were massive heroes in my imagination. They were what I, uh, I haven't included anything like that. And I did work like that for some time, but, um, and then I had that kind of, I, oh, and, and, and of course, Matisse and Picasso and uh, Braque and uh, p painters that, but even they, even the, they, they weren't abstract, but they still worked in a kind of uh, decorative flat pattern style. Um, but I, I don't know, I, I, I did, um, I, I can't explain it. I still feel there's a residue from that period that I still feel that art is separate from from life, I think I, I did come up with a quote in my talk today that I've never said before, but you don't paint about life because life will get in there anyway. You know, life will get into your work somehow. This is why now I like to show things like photographs of the, of the family or, or things like that, because um, yeah, there's something I, I, I'm, I'm trying to write something at the moment and it's about that thing about uh, even though art is is separate and should be dealt with in a separate way, 
there is that thing that, um, and you don't often have it in monographs about painters, uh, um, you know, what is happening to someone's life. It's interesting, I think, what is happening to some to an artist's life, what it might be a music composer or something, I mean, yeah, yeah. As opposed to um, biographies, uh, m monographs tend to deal with the work, which is good. I mean, I, I like that idea of monographs, you just deal with the work, uh, the, that the, 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 the creative work of the artist. But there's a place also for knowing, not in order to, uh, you've still got to ask the painting, get back to that quote, you've still got to ask the painting and let the painting tell you what's going on. But there is something about um, things being more human, humane, if you, um, yeah, engage with the artist's life as well and what, he's, what struggle you might have gone through or <laughs> guilt or what you might have had or whatever, lots of things. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I, I'm just wondering Kate. if I can join in. Can I join in, Kate? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, is that Sue? Hi, Kate. Hello. I know Hello. Sue's Hello. iPhone is waving at me. Hi. Can you see me? I don't, this is my very can't first I can't see you, but we can hear you. Okay, okay. Good. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been to Kevin's gallery and I've seen that huge huge painting um he was just talking about life being integral to me he is integral to his work it's the part of him and that painting is absolutely huge the energy mm. to uh, produce that kind of work um is incredible i think he's got endless energy humanity and this zest for life that and that is what's captured for me in his work and when i saw first saw running away with the hairdresser way way back i thought my, um, the energy of that painting was just knocked me sideways always does always will and he still has that energy it's incredible he has this huge love of humanity Absolutely. I'm a bit of a fan. <laughs> I think we all are. Um, I agree. <laughs> Kevin, where yeah. do you get your energy from, Kevin? As well, so looking like, back over what I've been saying this evening, I think it was the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was those pointers play fighting all around me. No. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. Um, um, there's an echo here. There's, an echo here. there's a gift. There's a gift. Um, um, I'm, I'm lucky. I'm, I'm lucky. lucky. I'm lucky. Yeah, you're very lucky. But <laughs> very talented and a lot of energy. Thank you. Thank you very much. And quite a nice chap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank it's you. Been great, it's been a great Zoom. It's been my first Zoom. So thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, really. Glad you enjoyed it. Kate as well. are, are there any more questions? Yeah. You too. I know um, gobsmacked. Sarah has just said, thank you for sharing your work with us. I love the, um, the vivacity, the colors, the brushstrokes and the people in the paintings. Um, and I'm certainly in agreement with that. And it's just the incredible energy of your work, as Sue says, it's, it's quite amazing. And the scale, as I said before, of some of them. Um, how, well, my question would be, you know, the, how long did that very large, large painting take you, Kevin? Oh, um, I said it is spring of 2018 that I started it. Um, I think it's either, it was the organizing of it and the mm. um, preparing of the ground. But, and it still took a long time, but it wasn't because it was, I, I, it was the sort of painting I could add to. Yeah. I used to come back into the studio and I'd see, I mean, I don't know if you, if we could, can you still see, see this stuff? Yeah. Can you see this? Yes, yes. Well, they, they, you can't know, it's, it's, it's a little bit cropped here. There's an angel there. <laughs> and uh, I 
get him back from London one night and I, I had to do something in Studio 18. So I, I opened up and I went in there and I was flicking through some drawing books because it is very much still in the process of working on this painting. And I came to a drawing book with a church commission that I'd had. And then I, I, there were some loose sketches of angel, of an angel. So I put a little charcoal doodle of this angel in there. I thought, well, I, it was starting to get a bit surreal anyway, the whole painting. And I went home and I, I came back in the, the, the day after and I, I thought, I'll see if it, if it works. And it, it, is, it did work. So I painted it in. And I had no idea then that this painting was, I don't know why I do this, but I, when I did a painting, when I got back to Wales and I was in um, my stay, um, Clangonoy, and I did a painting called The Artist in Retreat. It is very obviously me, it was very obviously autobiographical, but I didn't see it. Somebody had to tell me about it. <laughs> and in the same way, this, this is about Sue, this painting. And, um, Mm. And the surrealism of putting that angel there was kind of, and I still didn't see that either. I was telling me <laughs> about something oh, else. It's it's what that is, I think you've got to get, in order to do, um, you can't laboriously illustrate what you think is happening to yourself or what you think is happening in your life. It gets in there. It'll get in there anyway, you know, and that's why I'm not aware very often of the elements in my paintings that are directly about me. Okay. It's by me again. This one reminds me a bit of, um, it's got a sense of like Mark, some of Mark Chagall's work in it. I don't know if anybody else has said that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that sort of, there's something, yeah, really lovely about that. And, and <laughs> the, other, the other thing, I thought is I like the way that you haven't that you stayed true to what you want to make as an artist that you haven't tried to go with the fashions at, of that time you've stayed you know you stayed true to yourself and I really admire that because I think that's a really hard thing to do as an artist. Thank you. Yes indeed. <clears throat> well are there any more questions for Kevin? No. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kevin. That was brilliant. <coughs> thank you, it has been excellent. I'm losing my voice now, but thank you very, very much. Thank you. 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 I didn't get used to the Zoom thing, even towards the end, but um, I, I might not do another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you will. No, you were great. It was really good. Okay. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. That was brilliant. Yeah, really <laughs> inspirational. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Great. Thank you. I see. I see. There's a man's name there, Bill Marshall. Every all the questions came from women tonight. Speak up, Bill. It's okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> bye. Okay. Thanks very much bye again. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Oh, yeah.